Today is I'd like to talk about the major ligaments and structure of the knee. Okay, so what I've drawn here is I've drawn the, the right knee four different times, okay? So I've got two views from the posterior um, view of the right knee. There's a posterior view, anterior view, and then again, posterior, anterior. What I'll do is I'll kind of focus on the structures and ligaments of the right knee that are very deep, and then on these two illustrations, I'll focus on the, the structures that are more superficial, okay? Now, again, you've got your, your femur here, the anterior of your right knee, you got your femur, you got your tibia, and you got your fibula, okay? You know this is the right knee because the fibula is always on the lateral side of the leg, and here you have your patellar surface, which is a nice giveaway that it's, we're looking at the anterior side of that femur, okay? Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is that we have these little pads of fibrocartilage that lie on the superficial or on the superior side of the tibia. Alright? These guys, or each of these is a meniscus. Alright? And what these meniscus menisci do is that they cushion <clears throat> the femur as it kind of sits on top of the tibia. Okay? So these are pads of fibrocartilage. So we know fibrocartilage is great at resisting compressive forces. So this really cushions the um, the femur as it sits on top of the tibia. All right, you've got your lateral meniscus, it's on the lateral side, and your medial meniscus on the medial side. This is the medial meniscus. All right, and these guys really, I mean, if you were to look down on them, they look like these U shaped little pads that fit right on top of the tibia, almost look like half of a skate bowl from a skate ramp or something. And they're, they're, they really do a great job at cushioning um, those, those bones as they press together. <clears throat> we have a series of important cruciate ligaments. These lie in between the, the tibia and the femur. The first one is the anterior cruciate ligament, the ACL. This guy starts right about here on the anterior side of the tibia. All right. He stretches up. So superiorly, he goes back posteriorly, and he goes laterally, and he attaches right here on the back side of the femur, specifically on the medial surface of the lateral condyle. So he kind of goes from the anterior side of the tibia, and then back, and he attaches back here. Okay? What this guy does is he really prevents that tibia from sliding forwards. You can kind of see that. He prevents the tibia from sliding forwards, and he also helps to prevent hyperextension of the knee. We've got another cruciate ligament. This guy starts on the posterior side of the tibia, so we'll do a dotted line back there. And then he comes up, and he inserts right there. So I can still do a dotted line because he's behind that patellar surface. But he inserts on the lateral side of the medial condyle. And this guy prevents the tibia from sliding backwards or posterior. He also aids in preventing hyperextension. On either side of the knee, we have a large collateral, a pair of large collateral ligaments. They stretch from the epicondyle of the femur down to the fibula. This is the fibular collateral ligament. And on the other side, we have another one that stretches from the medial epicondyle all the way down to the tibia. This is the tibial collateral ligament. So let me label these guys. The ACL starts up front. This is the ACL. The PCL starts in the back. PCL. This is the fibular collateral ligament. FCL. And this is the tibial collateral ligament. T. Okay. Now, if we turned that guy around, we look at the posterior view, we'd still have the two menisci right here. Right, this is the posterior view of that same knee. But here, the posterior collateral ligament would start kind of like right here on the, on the lateral side. You'd stretch from this side, you need to stretch and insert right about there. Alright, so that's your PCL, you label him, whereas your ACL would start in the front, 
dotted line, you can extend backwards and insert right about there. So that is your ACL. And we would still have the two collateral ligaments, obviously, that would stretch from here to here and there to there. Okay. And that's really the, the main structure of the knee. Now, keep in mind that I've kind of stretched apart the separation between the femur and the tibia. I did this just to kind of easily more better illustrate what's going on inside there. These guys are obviously closer together in a natural knee. Okay. Now, if we look at the more superficial kind of structure of the knee here, the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to draw our good old patella, which sits right about here, right on top of that patellar surface. That patella is connected to, superiorly, it's connected to our big old quadriceps muscle. Specifically, he's connected to the rectus femoris muscle, right, which is the muscle, the central muscle of that gastric, of the, of the quadriceps. The, re the tendon of the rectus femoris connects him to the patella, and on the other side, the um, patella is connected to the tibia through the patellar ligament. All right, so they label this. This is, I'm gonna label it in purple, actually. So this is the tendon of the rectus femoris. This is the patellar ligament. All right. Now, the two other parts of the quadriceps are the vastus lateralis, which extends right here, and the vastus medialis, which extends down like this. These are the other major muscles of the quadriceps. They kind of extend out like this. They have their own unique tendons, and these guys stretch downwards and connect to either side of the tibia right here. These tendons are also have little parts of them that will attach to the lateral sides of the patella. Together, these kind of chunks of tendon, they form the retinacula, the lateral and medial uh, retinacula. So we label that retinacula. All right, the medial and the lateral patellar retinacula. Also from this view, we still are gonna have our fibular and patellar collateral ligaments, just like before. And together, this really forms the superficial structure of the knee. So here we have the medial and the lateral patellar retinacula, tibial collateral ligament, fibular collateral ligament, that's about it. If we look at the posterior side of the same right knee, we'll still have the collateral ligaments, the tibial, and then the fibular, it attaches to the fibula. But in addition, we'll have a pretty large um, oblique popliteal ligament that is going to come across like this and help support the posterior side of the joint capsule. And this really aids in preventing the knee from hyperextending. So this is the oblique popliteal ligament. You also have an arcuate popliteal ligament which stretches from the fibula up here. All right, so we'll call this guy the arcuate. A-R-C-U-A-T-E popliteal ligament. Together, these guys really just help to prevent um, hyperextension and they help support that posterior side. Now, extending underneath that arcuate popliteal ligament is where we have the popliteus muscle. This is a muscle that projects from the tibia and it goes underneath that arcuate popliteal ligament. This guy has a pretty special function. What he does is he helps unlock the knee from a locked position. So when we stand and as we extend that knee, the lateral condyle stops rolling on the
the um, tibial head before this guy stops rolling because you have that uneven kind of you know timing of when they stop rolling the femur rotates medially as soon as we completely extend the, the knee that helps to lock those bones in place because it puts a lot of tension on all these cruciate and collateral ligaments. In order to unlock that tension, this muscle called the popliteus, popliti, popliteus muscle will contract and that will help unlock that tension.